host, Deshanae Velasquez, and today I'm going to be presenting my research honors thesis on um, basically exploring the association between child contact and program participation. So, so the motivation behind this research, of course, as an economist, I'm interested in the employment outcomes of inmates. But this research, um, this presentation is going to be primarily focusing on child contact and program participation. There are studies that have shown that there are negative outcomes associated with incarceration. For example, incarceration can cause stress among inmates and their families, and it also can lead to them having difficulty finding employment post-release. For example, there is a study that showed that 70% of inmates um, reported that they had difficulty um, finding job finding work post-incarceration because of their criminal history background. However, there are programs available in prison to these inmates that exist for this reason, to mediate the negative outcomes of um, incarceration. And there is a little bit of research that explores um, basically what motivates these uh, parents to participate in these programs, but I'm coming in and researching the factors that motivate child contact and program participation. So, the main way that I'm going to be answering um, answering my research topic, I'll be asking two questions. The first question is going to be looking at the factors of child contact. Specifically, my variable, my independent variable of interest of interest as a factor of child contact is whether or not an inmate was their, was their child's primary source of financial support post-incarceration. Then, my second research question asks, what are the factors that motivate the inmates to participate in the programs while they're in prison? And as you can see, my primary variable of interest in, this, in the second research question is frequent child contact. So, pretty much, the first research question is exploring what affects child contact. And I think that um, financial support history affects child contact. The second research question explores program participation, including job training, educational training, parenting skills, and even employment counseling. And those inmates who are represented as having frequent child contact are inmates who reported that they spoke to their child in prison at least once weekly by phone, once weekly by mail, or once monthly by visitation in prison. And, and to explore these research questions, I am using a 2004 data set from the United States Bureau of Justice Statistics, specifically a nine month long study, which is called the Survey of Inmates in State and Federal Correctional, facil Correctional Facilities. This study includes um, inmate responses from 36 federal prisons and 1,549 state prisons. And to study my research questions, I'm going to be using linear probability models where the where the bounds can the bounds of these models can be outside of zero and one. However, this study is is looking to show the magnitude instead of the causality between the relationships of child contact and program participation. So before I show you guys my findings, I'm just going to talk a little bit about the descriptives of who's in my who's in my sample. So most of my inmates are pretty much roughly 37 years old. And there's a slight majority of white over black inmates. Most of them have never been married, and at the federal level, most most inmates most inmates have reported that they are drug offenders, and at the state level, most inmates have reported that they are violent offenders. And as I said, my study is going to be um, is going to be focusing on the parental inmates in this sample. So therefore, my sample is limited to two 
2,800, about 2,800 federal parental inmates and about 11,000 um, federal uh, state parental inmates. So, just looking at the parental, um, the parental inmate uh, reports of how often they talk to their children and how often they participate in programs, we can see that at the federal level, most parents talk to their kid, talk to their minor children by phone at least once weekly, and state inmates reported that they spoke to their children mostly by mail at least once weekly. Also, educational training was the most common way for for these uh, parental inmates to pursue uh, training and development programs while they're in prison, with 34% of federal parental inmates who reported they participated in educational training, and 37% of state parental inmates who reported that they participated in educational training. Also, uh, these parental inmates have been incarcerated for an average of four years. So that pretty much just gives you an idea that they have been in jail, so they were able to participate in the program if it was offered to them. Okay, so as I said, my first research question looked at the factors of child contact. And I was primarily interested in whether or not an inmate had reported that they were their, their child's primary source of income and financial support prior to their incarceration. Did that affect them having frequent child contact? And as you can see, at the 99.9% .9 significance level, there is an association at 11% at the federal level and about 12% at the state level that inmates who have frequent, uh, inmates who reported that they were their child's primary source of financial support did have uh, frequent child contact while they were in jail. And as I've also mentioned, my second research question which primarily explored um, child contact as a factor of program participation. Here, you can see that my dependent variable uh, vary based on the program participation. So for instance, I have job training here, employment counseling here. So you can see that child contact is associated with about 10% likelihood of participating in job training at the federal level, and um, there is a 3% 3 3 association of parents who have frequent child contact participating in employment counseling at the state level. Furthermore, in terms of parental parenting skills program participation, there is an 11 11 a 12% association with frequent child contact and parenting skills participation at the federal level. And among state parental inmates, um, these inmates who reported having frequent child contact have a 6% likelihood of participating in parenting skills program. And the parenting skills program and participation information, that is at a 99.9% .9 significance level as well. Therefore, um, after, after seeing the results of my findings, it is shown that child contact is in fact associated with a greater likelihood of participation in job training and employment counseling programs. Also, it should come as no surprise as that child contact is also very strongly associated with parenting skills participation in prison as well. Therefore, if policymakers are interested in increasing employment outcomes for prisoners post release, then they might want to consider making taking down some of the barriers that are currently in place, limiting child contact among state prisoners specifically to talk to have um, contact with their child. For instance, currently, currently state prisons can decide basically however they want to delegate who, who is their primary phone provider and also 
the privileges on who gets to talk to their kids are either less often rewarded or more often revoked at the state level because of less congruency in state policy. <laughs> and um, there's a lot in here. I'm, I'm not, you know, if you want to talk more about this research, um, you know, uh, please look, look me up, and I'll talk with you after. Because uh, you know, the, this is a complex survey design, and uh, you, you haven't accounted for for that in any of these analyses. Um, but but let me talk about something conceptual. I have a conceptual question because um, you're really looking for some research questions. Um, so we know from the literature that there's an association between child contact uh, in prison and misconduct by inmates. Um, presumably because you know they have a meeting and then they're stressed or distressed uh, after that child leaves and uh, we see uh, elevated rates of misconduct. Rates of misconduct are gonna be negatively associated with program participation because they're not gonna be allowed to do that. So there might be a missing element or mediating uh, effect here uh, where misconduct um, is, is sort of entering the middle of, of your uh, analysis here, where you have child uh, uh, contact, misconduct, and program participation. And I'm, um, so I'm wondering if you can just maybe speak to what, um, and maybe you can't, but I just want to raise this to you. What do you think might um, happen if you control the misconduct in, in the Virginia Board of Education? What do you think? I'm asking you to speculate. But you can say, I don't know. But, uh, uh, it just, uh, it was an association that came up uh, as you were talking that um, is potentially exploited. Um, I agree that it could definitely potentially, potentially be explored. And I would say that if I were to control uh, for misconduct, that would be an interesting way to expand upon my research topic. Um, aside from that, answer that I'm going to keep short and sweet. I would also say that um, that that is very interesting because I have also looked at another data set um, that is conducted by the Returning Home Study by um, the Urban Institute. And that study has whether or not the program was offered. So um, I'm able to see you know, <coughs> how, how the numbers change um, depending on what programs were offered at the time. But I definitely think that Ms. Yes, yes. So were you able to calculate some sort of like odd ratio that you can calculate some sort of like um, on average marginal effect? Um, for the time being, I am, um, I have not found, uh, I have not explored marginal effects and um, I know that they explore the linear and probability models and Okay, so let's say that given that your, your conclusion is correct, so I calculate the odd ratio. So here, if there is a child contact, there is going to be in federal prison inmate job training odd ratio is some ten percent higher than its counterpart who don't have uh, child contact. And in the beginning of your paper, you said um, the, the the prison inmates who have um, the job training, they're going to have a 20% more chance to get a job, right? So, but it's from the paper. That is, yes. So, combining all the facts, according to this, uh, your finding, uh, child contact can increase 2% of uh, employment uh, possibility for prison inmates. So, let's say that that's yeah, a fact, okay. according to this, right? Okay, so given this, do you think that uh, fostering or encouraging uh, child contact is beneficial in terms of benefit cost? Um, yes. Uh, yes, I think that um, investing in child contact is beneficial because um, what I'm showing here um, and what, what, the, what one of the, um, what my second research question 
which associated child contact and program participation, was interested in also looking at basically the motivation factor behind talking to their behind talking to their minor children. So basically, if inmates are in touch with their children, are they wanting to leave jail and make a better way and make a better life for their um, for their kids afterwards? And um, what I what my studies are showing is that um, so far, yes. Although I have not um, I have not yet applied the employment options piece, like you said, but I do think that um, it would be beneficial and it's something that is very important in order for those parents to want want to have stable stable work to, su to support their kids. And I think that if they um, if they find a job after they leave jail and they are um, willing to. They're willing to sacrifice making more money, maybe, in an illegal crime. I think that because they talk to their kids while they're in jail, they won't want to sacrifice. They won't want to go back to jail because they were there and they saw how they couldn't be there for their kids. 